Tanny Cooks here and today I'm going to show you how to make this absolutely delicious soul food smother turkey necks. Look at the gravy drippings y'all. This is good over some rice on a cold spring day or winter day. So let's get to cooking. We're going to start off with our aromatics, some fresh celery, garlic, and sweet onions. I'm going to wash my celery. It grows in the dirt so you need to clean it off. And I like to clean my celery um, carefully by breaking it in pieces. That way I could pull off the fibrous strands off of it. So this is the part that gets stuck in people's teeth or that's chewy and they just don't like and it's really easy to get off. So just break the celery in half and pull off the strings. I tried using a vegetable peeler for that but it didn't quite work. So then I'm just going to chop it up into small pieces but not completely shaved because remember this is going to stew down and add flavor and some sodium to our broth. Celery does have sodium in it. So I'm taking my fresh garlic and I'm using a white knife just to smash down the sides to make it easier to peel and then I'm giving that a slice and a chop. You can use minced garlic in a jar or slice it fresh. Now I'm going to slice a couple of sweet onions. Sweet onions will also release moisture in our broth and that moisture will have flavor in it so it's different than just plain water when you're stewing your meat. If you looked at my previous video, these are my turkey necks that I marinated and seasoned the night before and kept in the refrigerator. So I'm adding turkey broth, bay leaves, and some turkey gravy mix to it. So in my cast iron enamel Dutch oven, I have a link to this to buy it on Amazon. I am adding my chicken broth. You could add water, but since I have this chicken broth handy, I'm going to add part chicken broth and part water for more flavor. I like bay leaves, so I'm pretty liberal with it. I'm adding about six or seven medium-sized bay leaves. And to that, I am getting my turkey neck. So look at how seasoned that is. I'm using cling tongs to pull it out of my marinating bag and put it into my broth. And I'm doing this now because I want to see how full my pan gets before I add more liquid to it. So I'm going to add a layer of turkey necks and then some aromatics. So my chopped celery, onions, and garlic. That way the flavor will infuse every piece of meat instead of just being at the top or just at the bottom. Maybe it doesn't matter, but it's just the way I like to prepare my meat when I put it in a big pan to cook. I want to make sure the seasoning permeates all the way through. And you can look at these turkey necks and see all the seasoning on them. So that's the reason why I didn't add more dry seasoning to the broth is because my meat is already well seasoned. And then more onions. This is a really humble dish, the turkey necks, but once you stew it down, the flavor it infuses is so amazing and so delicious. It, it really does taste amazing and it doesn't cost a lot to make. So that's another reason why I like it. If you don't like any of the ingredients I use, like onions or celery, you certainly could leave it out and just try other things to flavor, like maybe bell peppers. Now this is my favorite measuring cup. I have four cups of water here that I'm just going to pour on the side, but I'm not going to pour it all in at one time. I'm only going to pour in about a cup or so, and then I'm going to let it cook down and see um, how much more I need to add later. These measuring cups are great because you can see the measure. Um, from the top looking at the glass, you don't have to sit it down on the counter to just look at the side. So that's another reason why I love these particular. These are OXO, OXO measuring cups. And look at that. Look how beautiful it looks before we even start the cooking process. That's when you know the food is going to be good. And so then I'm going to add my top on. I'm going to let it come to a hard boil just a few minutes. And as it comes to a hard boil, you can see that the juices are releasing from our vegetables. And that's exactly what we want to see. I'm going to use this time to move around my meat to make sure it's fully submerged. Any pieces that were at the top that weren't submerged, I'll turn them over and flip them around and make sure they feel all nice and cozy in the pot so that everything can cook as evenly as possible. So at this point, I'm going to turn my heat down. So it was at a hard boil for about 15-20 minutes and then I'm going to 
mash everything together so that it's fully submerged and then I'm going to turn down my heat to medium and put the top on and let it cook down for another hour or so. So you can see that it's been boiling. Most of my liquid has cooked out from that medium boil, but the flavor has intensified with all of those seasonings. So this is the point where I'm going to add more liquid and I'm adding more water. So you just want them almost completely covered and I'm adding more aromatics. So I add aromatics at the beginning and those stew down almost completely. And then at the halfway mark at about one hour, I add more onion, celery, and garlic because I want these vegetables to have a little bit more texture in our final dish. So that's why I split it up that way. So cover it with the top and then let it cook down for about another 45 minutes to an hour. All in all, I cook mine for about two, two and a half hours. But you mainly want to cook it until you see the meat starts to fall off the bone and the bones are basically fork tender. You could break them with your fingers when this dish is finally done. So I'm going to turn it down to low and now I'm going to add my packet of gravy mix. I'm adding this gravy mix. It contains milk and wheat. It doesn't contain soy. It has flavor already in it and it will add thickness. You certainly could use cornstarch or flour and make a slurry and season it yourself, but I want to give this turkey gravy mix a try and I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm just gonna add two packs of that in and that's the reason why I refilled this pot with water instead of using broth because I knew this, this gravy pack would have seasoning in it. But if you're just gonna use flour or cornstarch to thicken it, then you could possibly use some chicken stock. For the additional flavor it's really up to you how you decide to season your gravy you just want to make sure the gravy mix dissolves and doesn't have lumps in it in your final smothered stew and so that's what i'm doing here so now i'm taking my four cup measuring cup link is in the bio to buy one for yourself. I'm adding four cups of water to make my rice. So I make my rice the way my mother taught me, one part rice to two parts liquid. So I'm making two cups of rice and four cups of water. I had the chicken broth here because originally I was gonna use that, but since I used the broth for the turkey mix, I'm just gonna use water for my rice cooker. And I add some grapeseed oil or you can use olive oil to your pot. My pot isn't non-sticky enough for me, so I just use some oil to make sure that my rice doesn't stick. So with my one cup measure, I'm going to add a total of two cups of parboiled white rice. This is the rice I buy from Sam's Club. You've probably seen it in one of my grocery hauls. It comes in a big 10 or 20 pound box. Okay, so now I have two cups of rice, so I'm gonna add four cups of water. I love this aroma rice cooker. It's smaller than my instant pot and it does exactly what I need so that's why I use it for my rice. I'm adding some complete seasoning. If I was using chicken stock I would skip the seasoning step but with water just give your seasoning a mix to make sure it's mixed all the way throughout and then turn on the power and click the button for white rice. There's also a button for brown rice if you were making that instead. So after about two and a half hours, our turkey necks are finished. They're stewed down and fallen off the bone. And that's what I want. I want to see some meat on the bone and some meat off in our stew. Look at that, y'all. If you don't eat this, then this probably looks like kind of disgusting. But if you know, you know. If your grandmama cooked it, your aunties, somebody, then you know how much deliciousness is in this pot right now. So now I'm going to use a pot holder to take that hot top off and I'm just going to transfer my meat and gravy broth to a surfing bowl. This is really hot so you just want to be careful that you don't burn yourself. And take a look at that y'all turkey necks with onions, celery, and garlic in a delicious gravy. So now that my rice is finished, look, each piece is separate and fluffy just how I like it. It cooks perfectly in this rice cooker. I like to garnish my food with spring onion. It adds beautiful color, of course, but also a nice fresh taste. It tastes like springtime to me. It just livens up 
any dish that I add it to. So with our turkey necks, I'm adding my green onions. Absolutely delicious with the broth. And look at that, y'all. Can you see the flavor? And then uh, coupled with the rice, it's an absolutely hearty meal and it didn't co cost a lot of money to buy or prepare. And you can really serve a crowd with this. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you make turkey necks. Look at this, y'all. Look at how tender. The flavor is amazing. We only let it cook for two and a half, almost three hours, and it's absolutely perfect. So, as usual, I served up some of this in a bowl for myself. Look at that, y'all. But most of it I put into go plates for my family, coupled with some rice. So they were able to eat on this for a couple of days, which is how we like to do it. So, thank you so much for watching this video.